Hello, 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 Danica here, and today I'm going to be giving a commentary on the first ever sub-30 speedrun of the world's hardest game 3. This is an amazing run, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, let's get started. Here in 1A2, nothing has really changed since day one, but a lot has changed in the rest of this level. Uh, immediately in 1B2, we're going to be performing an enemy clip here. You'll see that I'm going to go straight through this enemy. Uh, this is a trick that I discovered um, about a year ago, but I wasn't able to implement it in a speedrun because it's a very precise trick. But since that time, uh, the community and I have been looking at different ways that those tricks can be used in full game runs and found a reliable setup for that there. Um, okay, so you might have also noticed I'm going to 1B3 first. That's part of our strategy here. Uh, we're going to be doing two more clips in this level. In 1B1, we'll be doing an enemy clip and a key clip. Uh, if you don't know what those are, it just, whenever you trigger a cutscene in the game, you get 10 seconds, sorry, 10 frames of invincibility before the cutscene starts, which allows you to do something like this. In this case, you actually die at the end, but because you touch the checkpoint, you're still uh, able to get to the other side. And also, there's the, kick, there's the coin clip. Two clips in one room. And with all of those strategies in place, we're going to finish this level with a time of 1.36 which is a pretty solid time considering that uh, a couple of years ago the world record was only 1.43. Uh, the world record is now 1.34 held by Raflik, which uses uh, two enemy clips I believe and much more difficult than the one that I did there but the 1.36 route that I'm using is very reliable so I've been using that for full game runs. Heading into level 2, uh, not much has changed <coughs> In, in these sections. Um, once we get down to 2C3, there's a slightly faster route that I'll use on the left hand side. Um, most of the route improvements that I have implemented are thanks to Raflik. Uh, if you don't know who Raflik is, uh, he recently started speedrunning Was Us Game 3 a couple of months ago and has proven himself to be a very strong player by setting several world records including a number of full game world records and lots of IL world records. So you can see here I'm executing this strategy here. It, uh, it is a bit of a difficult one. Quite a few of my runs sort of die there but this time I got it deathless which is always nice. Um, also if you're curious about the splits I'm using an auto splitter uh, script which I wrote myself but unfortunately it doesn't work on other devices so uh, yeah I can't really share it with anyone I just made it for myself. Uh, that route there is also uh, a one cycle faster than my previous route and just like that I'm 5.3 seconds ahead of my uh, former world record which at the at the time of uh, this run was uh, 30.17 which I set actually just uh, a couple of runs beforehand. Um, so we're five seconds ahead because that run uh, uh, had a death early in level two, but so far this run is flawless. We've got one death, but that's just from the key clip in level one. Um, so I haven't actually made any mistakes so far, which is fantastic. In fact, I'm going to finish level two here without any mistakes. Um, level one and two, I often get through without any deaths, but it's not. Uh, it's not a very common occurrence. Usually I have at least one or two deaths um, in, in the first two levels. So to get through the first two levels uh, without any mistakes is, is a strong start to the, to the run. Uh, again, here in 2A3, I'll be using a slightly faster route than what I would normally do, or what I used to do, I should say. Um, so I've spent a lot of time working on new routes for this game which is what has enabled me to take the time down from uh, what 
just a year ago, the world record was 37 minutes and 35 seconds. So I've reduced that by more than more than eight minutes, which is really crazy. Um, yeah, slight optimizations in this room. Uh, the general idea is pretty similar, but um, I faster grab of the key in the middle. Uh, and again, over here, a slight optimization on the right hand side threading myself through there a bit more quickly. Now unfortunately here is where I make the first mistake of the run. Um, I didn't quite go around the wall properly there. You have to get um, you have to get a corner boost around the wall there which I missed which is why I died up there. And uh, so that's the first death of the first real death of the run and, and the second death is also in this room. Um, I'm not too surprised that I died here because that, that is a tricky maneuver there but it is a little disappointing, but given how good the rest of the run is, you know, I knew there were going to be some deaths somewhere, so uh, I can't complain too much. And um, this return route here, which which again I've learned from Raflik, is, uh, is a lot faster than what I used to do before. Um, and heading into 3C2, I'm now 3.5 seconds behind my PB due to the um, couple of deaths we had in B3, but I'm still on perfectly good pace. And uh, a big change to the route is we're skipping the key in C2. Um, so that was something, again, that that uh, an idea I got from Raflik. Now, unfortunately here, yeah, I, I died again. Uh, I missed some coins. I tried to make my way out on the normal cycle, but I was too late because I spent too much time picking up the coins. So. That was a bit of a silly mistake. Um, and then I died again here. Uh, this is a tricky maneuver, um, so I'm not too upset that I died there, but all in all, it's starting to look a bit rough for level three. We've already died four times in level three. Uh, in fact, I would say level three is probably the weakest part of this run because of those four deaths. Um, however, those are the last four deaths in level three. From now on, um, the rest of level three uh, I will not die at all, which is nice, especially towards the end there are some uh, difficult strategies in, in 3B1 that I've just learned recently, so getting those deathless is great. Um, but at the moment I'm just finishing 3A1, which I'm using the same route I have done for years and I'm very consistent at it, so 3A1 is, is a room where I never die, I never die there anymore. And 3A3, again I'm using a route by Raflik here. And I believe, actually, I think I might have uh, made a mistake here. I can't remember if it was this run or a different run. Yeah, I made a mistake there. Um, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but I, I recovered well. Um, I mean, I say a mistake. Uh, all it was was I hesitated a bit too much and I missed the cycle I was supposed to be on. And so I was forced to improvise and uh, luckily I was still able to make it through fairly quickly but I lost a couple of seconds because I slowed down a bit more than I should have. Um, so that's a bit disappointing but at least I didn't die you know so the run the run was still able to to go on. Um, moving up to 3B1 here this is an interesting room um, especially the part I'm going through now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this um, I'm choosing sort of a sort of classic uh, Curab corner cut style and not going for any of the fancy tricks that Raflik uses. Um, and then over here I'm going to go for the top coins first and this is part of a, a new route which I developed for this uh, just, a, just a couple of days ago. And you can see on the splits I lost um, about two seconds because of that mistake in A3. Um, but I'm still only seven seconds behind, um, so I'm still in with a chance. Uh, 3C1, again another change here is going uh, clockwise instead of anti-clockwise, which is faster and also it gives me the checkpoint, which is useful because um, what I'm about to do here is fairly tight, um, but I managed to get it through. It's basically the opposite of, of what I did up the top. Um, but for some reason I find it harder going backwards. Maybe it's because I'm less used to it or because it's something that makes it something else that makes it more difficult. I'm not quite sure. Sneak in between those enemies there for a faster cycle than I used to use. 
And just like that, we've finished level 3. We're behind, but we've got very good pace. 931 heading into level 4 is, um, is good pace in my books. Um, I think the fastest pace I've ever gotten into level 4 was 916, and that was an exceptional pace. Um, but 931, I'm still happy with that. So at this point, I'm thinking I need to buckle down, concentrate, and get a good level 4. And so far, B1's gone fine, and B2 is going fine. And all of this so far is my normal uh, routes, but for C3 and C4 later in the level um, are things I've changed. So for example, C3, um, this is based off, uh, although I think it's slightly different, but based off a route by Raflik. Um, that corner, uh, that corner on the on the bottom is is a bit difficult to get that uh, coin in the corner, but uh, after a lot of practice, I've been able to get consistent at it. And you might have noticed we skipped the coins there in 4C4, so uh, it's actually faster to get those on the way back. Uh, this is the same route that I normally do. There are faster routes through here, but I'm not ready to learn them just yet. Um, and E4, again, this is pretty similar to what I usually do, although I did uh, speed things up a little bit on the right side here, going straight down there, whereas usually I would have waited, so optimize that a little bit. And just like that, we're heading into 4E5 after 10 minutes and 59 seconds, which is a pretty solid pace. And 4E5 used to give me a lot of trouble, but due to sheer amount of practice and attempts, uh, I've managed to get very consistent at this room. Uh, so usually I get it deathless. Um, I, I actually got a, a couple of close calls on the way back there, but uh, I still made it, made it through first try, which is great. So 4E5 is great. Unfortunately, two deaths here in 4D4. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, yeah, I, I just was trying to be too too tight when I didn't need to be that tight and you know luckily they didn't lose much time only lost a couple of seconds because they were so close to the beginning but it is a bit of a shame to have such you know silly deaths uh, on a place a place that I don't usually die so now that we head back through 4c4 we're gonna pick up those coins um, so this is a new maneuver uh, that I learned from Raflik uh, it's it's not really very difficult, but it took me a little while to sort of get the hang of it. And then we're heading back through 4C3. Um, and again, the way I'm going through here up the top is slightly faster than what I used to do. And so far I haven't died uh, anywhere in level 4 except those two deaths in 4D4. So it's a pretty decent level 4, although usually... Uh, usually I would only have zero or one deaths at this point. So uh, you can see, for example, I've lost three seconds over my PB, so I'm now 10 seconds behind. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm starting to think that, you know, uh, you know I'm, losing, uh, I'm losing my ground, you know, and I might be slipping behind. But you'll see later that, we, that we'll gain all of this time back um, in spades. So that's D2 done. Uh, same route as normal, although I have made some slight... It's the same speed, but I made some slight tweaks to the route to make it more consistent, especially with the key in the middle. Uh, that used to be a, an area that I would die uh, quite a lot. And then again through C3, and this is pretty similar to the first time, but we're going to get these coins here instead. And uh, this could be a bit faster, but that's the way I do it at the moment. And now here we are heading to 4B4, and I'm behind my PB, but only by about 10 seconds. So 4B4, wow, this is an interesting room. Um, in, in this run, I only died here twice. Uh, I, have done it, I have done it deathless. Uh, and in fact, I've been incredibly consistent with getting it in only one or two deaths. Uh, so, most of my recent runs have, have had uh, less than three deaths in here. And unfortunately in this run, I died there, which, uh, even though it's only one death, it's quite, uh, it loses quite a bit of time, and then that was my second death there. So, even though it was only two deaths, it lost about 15 seconds in total. Um, 
So it took me one minute and fifty seconds to complete level uh, to complete this room four v four, whereas uh, my PB for this when I did a Deathless was 135. You can do it even faster than 135 if you use some faster routes um, like corner clips or faster routes on the right hand side. Um, also if you noticed I did the fast key strat, that's something which I've gotten very consistent at after uh, practicing level 4 closely. And now we're on the way back and uh, yeah, also notice how I go straight through the checkpoint. That's a bit faster than what I was doing before. So um, 4v4 overall is something that I've gotten a lot better at over the last couple of weeks because uh, I've been practicing specifically uh, different techniques in this room to speed it up. And once I hit that checkpoint, I was really relieved to know that I uh, hadn't died on the way back in 4v4. That's always nice. And so I went in 10 seconds behind, but I came out only 0.7 seconds behind, so pretty much I gained 10 seconds in 4v4, and now I'm uh, neck and neck with my PB. And I see the death counter says 9, and I'm wondering to myself whether maybe uh, I could get a single digit death count, uh, and the answer is no, unfortunately I died right there. So that crushed that dream. Uh, yeah, before this run, my personal best death count was 10 deaths. So when I saw that 9 death counter, I thought, oh, maybe, just maybe I could get 9 deaths if I did everything else perfect um, as, and, and set a single digit death count, but it didn't happen this time. It will happen one day, but uh, not today. Um, now, 4A2, uh, this is a fascinating room. Uh, it, it started off as a memory challenge, and in some of my early runs, I died here because... I forgot the pattern, you know, or misremembered it. Um, at this point, I've done so many runs through here that I don't think I'll ever forget the pattern. Um, but it's no longer really a memory challenge. I find it's more of a psychological challenge um, because you have to stay focused enough. Um, and also, I should just mention this is the pattern reset here, right? This is the main menu pattern reset that I'm doing. And I did it pretty well, I think. Um, some of my main, pen, main menu pattern resets are a bit faster, a bit slower, depending on how quickly I, um, you know, click the mouse and everything, but that was pretty good. Um, the reason for the main menu pattern reset is it speeds up, it resets the cycle, which, which speeds things up, and you save about three seconds if you do it perfectly. Um, but the, the psychological challenge is to remain focused um, throughout this very long room and if you make a single mistake like if I died right here I'd lose 30 seconds or so um, so you really have to get this deathless in some of my older runs I had deaths in this room but if you want to get sub 30 you have to get this deathless and just like that we're into level 5 with a time of 1740 which is crazy considering that a couple of months ago I'd never gotten into level 5 in less than 20 minutes and now here I am getting in there with a time of 1740. My personal best split into level 5 is 1726, which is even more crazy. Uh, unfortunately, in that run, I died quite a lot in level 5 and I wasn't able to uh, maintain the pace. Um, but 1740 is still a very good split. Now, the routing in this room has actually changed a bit. Um, again, this comes from Raflik. Uh, if you pay close attention to my old runs, uh, you'll see that it's slightly different. I'm going uh, over the top instead of under the bottom. Um, saves about five seconds, I, th I think. I think. Um, and then heading into 5B4, not much has really uh, changed here. Um, go and go over and get get the key. Um, Something that, that has changed in level 5, a big change in level 5, which uh, again is Raflik's idea, is we're going to delay the key in 5C3. So the key in 5C3 usually unlocks uh, one of the doors in, in 5B4. Um, but you'll see later that we can, if we get the key later, uh, then it actually doesn't cost us any time. Whereas if we get it now, it'll take us about 10 or 15 seconds to grab it. So we can save that time 
by getting the key later and then also getting the coins later. But I'll explain that more as we get later on. 5d4, this is the same route I usually use. There are faster routes, but they're quite difficult. And so normally I would go uh, up into 5c3 here, but at this point I'm just doing a pattern reset and I'm going to go back there later. You can actually do this without a pattern reset, but uh, I'm not very comfortable with that route yet. I probably will learn it at some point, but uh, I'm not ready to, to use it yet. So now we head into 5b3, and this is uh, another big potential run killer. Again, if you want to get sub-30, you can't afford any big mistakes, and dying in this section here, it, I would count that as a big mistake. Um, so from this point on, I have to get the coins uh, without going down for the checkpoint, because that would take too much time. I have to go up and get the coins, and then get back without uh, dying. And I can do it fairly consistently, but I have also lost quite a few runs uh, due to deaths in this area. So the pressure is definitely on at this point. Uh, but once I get to this point, I'm pretty confident that I can make it through because I've done the hard stuff. And also with these coins, I need to make sure I don't miss any of them. In one of my former uh, world records, I missed one of the coins there, uh, which loses 10 seconds because you have to go back and get it later. So normally I would have gone up to get the coins on the right side of 5b3, but since we haven't got the key yet, we're going to do that later. So watch the key in the middle, right? I can get it and do a key clip, and it doesn't lose me any time compared to what I would have normally done. So effectively, I get the key for free. Um, there is a faster route through here that Raflik uses, so we, we can do even faster, um, but I'm just keeping it simple, doing it the way I, I usually do it. And then later on in the run, we'll go and we'll go and get those coins in 5v3 when we're on our, on our way back. Uh, 5c2. This is another room where I've stuck with my old route. Um, there are there are lots of faster ways through here, and I will probably learn uh, one of those soon, but uh, not yet. And 5c1. This is a room that used to give me a fair bit of trouble, especially up the top. But after practicing a lot on level 5, um, even the top I find quite easy. Uh, I mean, I think in this run I might have made a small mistake, but I didn't die. Um, notice, by the way, we haven't died in level 5 at all yet. Um, so that's exactly what I was hoping for, right? Like, when I, when I went into level 5 with 1740 pace, you know, I wanted it to be as good as possible. Um, no, we didn't mess that up. I was getting confused with another run where I missed a coin here, but yeah, no problems with 5C1 there. I've, I've been very consistent at that. Um, although I will probably change my route there at some point because the route I'm using is not really uh, the greatest. Um, so heading into 5D1, um, again, this is a bit of a psychological challenge. Um, it's um, you know, a lot of people say this is the hardest room in the game, and I used to, I used to strongly disagree with that opinion. But more recently, uh, particularly now that I've gotten better at 4v4, I find that actually the number of deaths I have in 4v4 and the number of deaths I have in here are sort of often the same or roughly equal. Um, it's yeah, it's not uncommon that I would die in here more than I do in 4v4. That being said, I can mostly get through here deathless, uh, whereas I've only gone through 4v4 deathless once, so I, I suppose I definitely do find this room easier, but it's still one of the biggest challenges in level 5, so to get through that without any mistakes is a huge relief. And at this point, I pretty much have the record in the bag as long as I can, um, as long as I can keep it together um, in in uh, 5A3 and 5A2. And 5D2, I mean, this is just one of the epic challenges that Stevie laid out in the game. Um, there are faster routes through here, but I'm using my old reliable route. Um, in fact, this may be the same route that I used in my 3735. I might have 
uh, slightly upgraded it, but it's roughly the same idea. And yeah, it's it's something I've been using. It's a route I've been using for so long now that it's extremely consistent. Uh, you know, it's very rare that I die in there, so I'm not really too worried about 5D2 as a challenge anymore. And uh, 5D3, unfortunately, I missed a coin here, um, but it's not too big of a deal. Um, the way my route through here works is um, I can sort of choose how far I go at this particular moment here, right here, where I turn around. I, so I can choose how far I go, and in case you didn't know what was coming, <laughs> there were enemies coming, and the idea is I have to line myself up with the key so that I reach the key when the enemies come. And I need that because I need to do a key clip to, to phase through the enemies. So that's what's going on in that room. Um, and now I just need to make my way back without dying. Like I said, I'm very consistent here, but if I were to die right now, the whole run would be dead. So definitely there's some pressure on there. Grab these coins and head back. And now we're, we're really on the home stretch. Uh, slightly faster cycle here if you squeeze between those enemies there, so that saves a bit of time over my old routes. And I'm taking it cautiously down the bottom here. You can go through more quickly, but um, I'm just using the route that I'm comfortable with. Now, remember how I said we had to go back for those coins? Well, now is the time. So now that we've we've got the door, we come back to these coins. Now, there is a bit of a cost to doing this because we have to sort of go around the, once we get down the bottom here, we have to go around the wheel again. Uh, but we saved, overall, it, it still saves time, so. Um, and we still haven't died a single time in level five. So it's looking good for um, getting a really solid level five time. So now I go heading into the grey, and at this point I'm just thinking, I just need to get through here without dying. So normally I would use some faster strategies in this room, um, especially on the left hand side. But since I'm so far ahead, 33 seconds ahead of my PB, um, I decide to play it safe uh, on the left hand side, because it's that's a common cause of me dying on this room. Is, is over here using my uh, faster routes. Um, however, heading into A2, I'm not going to skimp on the fast routes here. So I almost die there, but not quite. So that's um, that's my fast version of the left side of A2, which is way faster than what I used to do. I mean, the 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 new route that I've got here saves like 20 seconds or more over the old stuff I was doing. So. I, I put off optimizing A2 for a long time because I didn't want to compromise my consistency. But yeah, it 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 just became silly not to at a certain point it just became silly not to improve it. So and there we go. And at this point, I was uh, just absolutely overwhelmed and uh, joyful to have you know come in 50 seconds ahead of my PB, which by the way, my PB died uh, in, in A3, doing the very fast strats that I said you know were risky, so that's why I chose not to do them here. And I head in 50 seconds ahead, which means I'm on pace for a very solid sub 30, not just below 30, but a really solid time, uh, 29, 26. So I mean, this is just a cutscene, that's the end of the run. Uh, 10 deaths, no deaths in level 5, uh, no deaths in level 2, uh, 4 deaths in level 3, 5 deaths in level 4, and 1 death for the key clip in level 1. Um, the time for level 1 was a 1.36, the time for level 2 was a 2.48, um, which is uh, tied with the world record at the, at the time of this recording. Um, the time for level 3 was a 5.06, um, which at the time of this recording the world record is 4.48 held by me, so it wasn't great level 3, but not too bad. The time for level 4 was an 8.09, and at the time of this uh, video, the world record for that is a 7.57 held by me, so it's only 12 seconds off the world record, which is pretty solid. And the star of the run, level 5 with an 11.45, 
uh, time for level 5, no deaths, and it's only 7 seconds behind, sorry, 8 seconds behind the world record, which is 11.37, which I set yesterday. Uh, and the reason that it's that it was slower is because of that slower A3 that I was talking about. So, I hope you enjoyed. That was the World's First Game 3 in 29 minutes, 26 seconds, sub 30. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.